everybody. Happy Wine Wednesday. I'm super excited to be here and to have the opportunity to interview the ultra talented Lee DeWise, who's joining us this afternoon. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Great. Thank you. You are tuning in um, same time zone as me because you're over in, in SoCal, right? Yes, that awesome. is correct. I'm in my, uh, in my studio in Los Angeles. Now, have you ever been to the Napa Valley? Many times, and I uh, I enjoy wine. I do like wine, and I've it's definitely something I've grown to uh, appreciate more over the years. Um, I think w my first introduction to wine, you know, like anybody's, is you know, you just drink it; it's there. Then you go to Napa, and you start to learn a little bit more about it, and you start to appreciate the process and what goes into it. And um, yeah, I'm I'm a, I'm a fan. And I'm drinking some of uh, the jam Cabernet right now. Some of this stuff, perhaps? Mm-hmm. Which yeah, I it, thoroughly enjoy. Isn't it nice when wine doesn't come in a bag like it did in college? It is very nice. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's really, and yours is actually very good. It's very tasty. I do like uh, red wine, so. Well, I think the jam, the cab, it's National Chocolate Day, so I would definitely recommend pairing what mm -hmm. you're sipping on with some chocolate. It's also National Breadstick Day, though, which obviously you got to do the butter with the breadstick. Bread and butter. It's <laughs> it's it's a no brainer. Well, okay, so thank you so much for joining us, Lee. Um, I think yeah. we're gonna be linking all your info for everyone tuning in. If awesome. they don't know where to to find you, they'll know now. It's gonna Very be down cool. below. Um, but if you want to just kick it off with uh, your first song. Yeah, um, I'm going to play. Uh, also, thank you to everyone that's tuned in right now and, and watching. I appreciate you uh, hanging out with us. Um, I'm going to play a song called Night and Day right now. Um, and this uh, I released this uh, not too too long ago, but here we go. <laughs> Sure. And I think I'm tired, but I'm not quite sure And the movie sucks, and my head feels numb Though it's bright outside, can't wait for the night to come mm -hmm. All my days night and day yeah i feel like does that kind of um you know represent the the similarities but the differences of 
when you're conscious and awake during the day and then um, when you're dreaming and um, asleep and your subconscious, you know, exactly. sort of side comes out. That's exactly right. Um, and I think that, you know, that's when I do my best writing as well, early in the morning or late at night um, when you're closest to your subconscious. But um, I also think that nighttime can be a real escape for people. You know, sometimes sleep can feel like an escape in a way and uh, it's kind of a reset for for many so um yeah i've i've always uh appreciated um that 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 feeling of sleep and at night and i just think you know some of the most amazing things come to you in your sleep you know so it's just kind of a song that can that really embraces that have you like ever looked into the theory of like dream hopping and like the theory that when you're asleep you're actually like a little bit more vulnerable to another dimension and being able to like cross through planes yeah why not i mean i think we know so little <laughs> and uh you know i think it leaves much to the imagination i think there's so much about uh the way our minds work that we're still figuring out so i'm i i don't i don't uh i don't turn a blind eye to any you know, any of those things. I think, I think it's more interesting than anything. I think it's interesting to talk about and I think it's interesting to write about. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's kind of an unlimited, um, you know, it's unlimited, you know, you can go on and on about what the mind can do and what it means. And I think mm -hmm. that that, what, that's what makes it so enticing to like write about. What I used to do, and I, I want to start doing this again, actually, I would keep a journal right next to my a bed dream journal. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you know, it's, it's so fascinating to me how, how quickly a dream and what you wake up and you're so startled or, you know, shocked or whatever by, um, all yeah. these details, but they just, they slip so quickly. And it's like, if you don't turn over and write it down immediately, it just dissipates into thin air. Sure. And I think that's a, a really cool thing to do because if you keep track of the dreams that you do remember when you wake up and then go and look back and maybe you yeah. see a pattern and I think it's, it's a cool thing to do. Definitely. I like that. So I liked, okay. So you talked briefly about witches and ghosts, which is very yeah. Halloween esque. Love it. It is. It is. I actually realized that while I was playing it. I was like, wow. I was like a... looking at your pillows, the trick or treat. And I'm like, he does. We are like all Halloween. about the holidays. I do. I, I love Halloween. I've always loved mm -hmm. the fall. Um, I love the feeling of fall. I, you know, growing up in, in, the, in the Midwest, you know, the leaves changing and that fall feeling. It really is my favorite time of the year. So whenever, whenever I get a chance to uh, pretend, you know, that, uh, you know, I, I really wish it was this feeling year round. Like I, I genuinely love the feeling of fall and Halloween and it's just mm -hmm. this time of year. It's just, I don't know, there's something that's inspiring about it to me as well. I think there's so much change and there's, you know, um, the cooler wet. I just, there's a lot to it um, mm -hmm. that I enjoy. Well, okay. So remember what I was telling you about the, the little sipping situation? So here we go. Um, why do, uh, witches always ace their English classes? I don't know. Spelling. Wow. Very well, very well done. That's, you weren't kidding when you, when you told me earlier that they were going to be kind of in that dad joke world, <laughs> you did not disappoint. I, thanks, cheers. Lee. Cheers. <laughs> and again, thanks to everybody, uh, watching and hanging out. Hope you guys are having a good time. Absolutely. Is your um, Instagram handle just Lee DeWise? At, or? Lee, at Lee DeWise official. Sweet. So if you want to check out his Insta, um, is Twitter the same thing? Twitter is just at Lee DeWise. Perfect. Perfect. That'll be right down below. So same as Facebook. If you want to find him on Twitter, it'll be Lee DeWise, at Lee DeWise. Um, okay. So you've kind of been in the music world since you were what early teens yeah i started uh playing the guitar and writing you know singing and since i i, I wish i could put a, an exact but 13 14 somewhere in there i picked up a guitar and started teaching myself you know i never really took a lesson um it was more about to me it, it's it, you know I, i've always been an audio 
visual learner anyways. Mm -hmm. So to me, um, you know, this sounds like this. Okay, I can, I can make that sound and, you know, put your fingers here to make this sound. Okay, everything felt very, um, I don't know, easy to me when I was younger uh, when it came to that stuff. So it was, um, I started learning like how to play Beatles songs, you know. I was like so proud when I could do that <laughs> for the first time. Um, and then I kind of started writing songs to, my first intro to writing music was playing other people's music and writing my own lyrics you know, because I wanted to like, I mean, I was so young, I just, uh, you know, I, I, I wasn't confident enough to form chord progressions and then write a song and play it in front of anybody for that matter. So um, I think I fell in love with the, the, the idea of being a songwriter as a profession. I remember mm -hmm. listening to Cat Stevens and Paul Simon for the first time and just being blown away by the fact that that's what they do for a living, you know? And I was like, I want to do that. They get to tell stories through music. And it always looked so kind of magical to me. It looked like very, um, I don't know. It's just, it felt like very powerful. And so I fell in love with that idea. And then um, I just kind of went from there. And, and I started playing, I started singing. And and, and uh, my dad was, my parents were always very encouraging of, of, of it. It was never, um, you know, have a backup plan. They knew that, I wasn't going to have a backup plan. It was kind of, when I hit a certain age, I'm like, music's what I'm going to do. And that was it. Well, and your dad, he was a, a postman, right? And so he yeah. had his Sundays off and that was kind of your designated day, day to immerse yeah. yourself. Yeah. Yeah. He would throw That's in some cool. vinyl. He, he was, he had a great uh, record player and, and uh, we would throw on vinyl and it was kind of that day, you know, we would, we, I, I, it was, it's very vivid memories of that. So um, always really uh, been a fond memory, and and I think as uh, for me that was where music was highly instilled in me. You know, I was it was just in my blood at a very young age to to love folk music especially. I I, I loved you know Peter Paul and Mary, and I, you know going back to the Kingston Trio, and you know um, obviously Simon and Garfunkel, and and there was just. There's something about the storytelling aspect of the of the music that I really loved. I followed along with the story of whatever they were singing about. So to me, it always it was always very poetic, but also um, fun to be a part of that story and follow. And so when I started writing my own music, I wanted to give people a story they could follow as well. And I always try to write when I'm writing, you know, in a way that you know can be a soundtrack for someone's you know memory or or something like that. You know, I've always wanted it to people to be able to, cause I feel music, you know, people attach it to memories and it become these little soundtracks to moments in your life. And, you know, the hope is always that my songs can be that for somebody else as those songs were for me. And that's like, to me, the most amazing part of the music and musical experience, whether you're going to a concert or listening to a new album or a new single, it's the ability to, connect to the artist even though you've never met them they've never met you the lyrics they can apply to your life and you can feel them so strongly because um i know especially with your music you you have this side of you where you you get very vulnerable in what you discuss via lyrics and that's an important thing to have as an audience member because you need that vulnerability to see that other people are going through things or have gone through things that you also have gone through or are going through. And I think that ultimately is a saving grace a lot of times for people. Absolutely. Um, and I, I, I think that I can always be a little more vulnerable in my music than I am, I guess, in outside of that. And even talking about the song sometimes is difficult because you're like, I, like when someone says, what's this song about? It's kind of hard to explain sometimes. I'm like, well, let me explain it through the song, <laughs> you know? And uh, so it really is, and, and, and it's always interesting to see what, how people, um, how people take to certain songs or what they mean to them. You know, again, what I write a song about and what someone thinks it means, it can be two different things, but I never correct anybody. If someone says this song means this to me, that's mm -hmm. what it means to them. That, you know, I may have written it for this, but to be totally honest, I don't even, I find out sometimes later on what the songs were about. You know, I may think I'm writing about you know, X, Y, or Z. And, and it turns out, you know, there's a whole other element and aspect of it that I was kind of unpacking when I was writing it. And it's therapeutic in a way for sure. But, 
you know, um, I also love the side of music that doesn't have to always be so deep, you know, um, sometimes you can just enjoy a song for a song and a melody. And, and, and I think that that's from a young age, you know, you hear little nursery rhymes and you love it just because they're fun and you love it, you, you know, mm-hmm. the, the singing along and, and all that. So I think, I mean, just music in general is such a powerful force in my life that I try to, um, I don't know, use it in a way and write and create in a way that, you know, it can, it can mean more than that to other people. And it definitely does. I think right now, more now than ever before, um, everyone just needs that indulgence in terms of that emotional connection, whether it be through music or Zoom or whatever. We're just all yearning for, you know, obviously in-person concerts would be great. But um, right now, just music in general, I think, is getting a lot of people through. And to that, I cheers you. Cheers indeed. And you just came out with your latest release, Weeds, right? Yeah, I just, uh, Weeds is the latest uh, single. We just released it uh, October 23rd. And um, it was the last song I did before the pandemic. And um, it's it's an uplifting song and it's a hopeful song. But I think um, we were talking about this a little earlier. Um, it, It really is a song about how one little moment can impact your entire life in such a huge way. And how sometimes you're lucky enough to discover, um, you know, the flower amongst the weeds. And sometimes you are, you know, the flower that's being discovered and and just all the things that encompass it. But at the end of the day, um, I really I really felt this song had a hopeful meaning for me. It it felt very uplifting and um, I love singing it. So I'm going to play it for you now, I think. Thank you. Here we go. This is Weeds. Somehow took the best of you To find that there's a best of me Oh, you found, you found me through the week. 
Is it weird hearing the applause? Because mm. I know it's like probably you know been what? more. It is, but also I've grown a little more accustomed to it over the past six months. Um, I've done a lot of things, whether, you know, streamed or online or whatever. And, um, you know, I just kind of, I, I honestly look at it like I'm in each one of these people's, I'm just it's just me and them and I'm playing just for them. And uh, I think that that's the way to approach it because there's an intimacy to to it because I'm here alone, mm -hmm. and and people out there are watching alone. So there is that intimate thing, and um, it, it kind of is a different way of approaching the songs and how you play them and how you sing them. And it's kind of interesting. It's really cool, actually. I I always forget sometimes when it's just like me and the artist in the stream yard that there's right. like I never know because I don't. I personally don't like to keep checking the Facebook because it'll distract me. Oh, I don't um, even have it up. I have no idea how many people are. I know that there's some people in. I see. I know that, which is awesome. Um, but I, I don't have it up right now. I don't know what it is about it, but like if I start looking and like reminding myself, oh, okay, this is live. Like everything right. I'm saying right now, people are right. saying it freaks me out, but it is cool that um, we have this ability to do the virtual style of concert and almost like what you, you were saying, it's a very intimate, um, you know, personal situation that wasn't really ever developed before the pandemic, um, at least. No, there were, there were variations of it. Right. And to be honest, I, I did a couple things in the, I mean, I've done streaming shows in the past and stuff, but you kind of did them as, um, I don't know, it's just changed. It's, it used to be you'd play on the road and you did a stream show. If you did, if you did a stream show, it was like a special occasion. And now it seems that streams, you know, it's the other way around. You know, I, I am looking forward to getting back on the road. I am, am I am looking forward to playing in person, um, obviously, when the time is right. Um, but until then, um, whenever that may be, um, I, I, I'm just happy that I can still play for fans and still connect and still be playing music because it really is such a part of who I am. And, uh, you know, I, if I can bring some joy to somebody through a song or if I can comfort someone through a song or move someone or help someone get through something or whatever it is, um, I think that's really the power of music. And, um, you know, I don't take that lightly and I, you know, I, I appreciate that people give me a chance to listen, you know, and let me be a part of their world right now. You know, it's, it's, yeah. it's different. Uh, it's a different time, you know? Well, and so speaking of just like how things have evolved and changed with the pandemic, how do you think? Cause I know you congratulations, eight years later, you got married in yeah. 2012. How do yeah. you think the like wedding and just like everything would have been different if you were getting married this year? Cause <laughs> Oh, well, I'll say this, you know, my wife, Jana is obviously, she, she's, you know, the world for me. Um, and we did celebrate eight years recently, we've been together 10 years, uh, and celebrated eight years of marriage. And this year we kind of had our anniversary at home, you know, it was during the pandemic and, um, you know, we kind of brought that anniversary vibe here and we did like an at home, uh, I had a whole thing surprise for her kind of, uh, uh, this um, amazing uh, wedding planner out. Her name is Beth Helmstetter. She put together like an at-home like thing for us, and it was amazing. And we had such a good time. And um, you know, our dog Remy was with us because he's also our life. <laughs> so mm -hmm. he's everything to us as well. So, um, but yeah, no, she's uh, my wife. John is the best, and she's you know one of the sweetest people uh, that you'll ever meet. And uh, you know, we've spent a lot of time at home together. You know, I'm usually on the road. She's an actress, so she auditions. And, we're, you know, we spent more time home alone together than ever. And, um, you know, we've we've discovered new things. You know, even our backyard, we're looking at it like, you know what we should do? You know, and I'm gardening now. Mm -hmm. I have a, you know, it's like, so <laughs> we've done the best we can to keep Sourdough? things. <laughs> she, my wife's My wife's made plenty of amazing different, you know, I wake up, we're, you know what I'm going to make today? Awesome. You know, we go in there, we make some, but... Um, I think really everyone's just trying to make the best of, of the situation the best they can. And, um, you know, your question was how would things be different? I mean, her and I are both 
we're also very uh, chill and easygoing. So mm-hmm. we probably would have been like, you know what, let's let's just get married, and when the time's right, we'll have a party. You know. Yeah. So um, you know, I feel bad for those people that obviously have probably had to change a lot of their plans. But at the end of the day, you know, you don't just get married for the wedding. So right. you know, you'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, they say uh, you learn a lot about your significant other person when you travel with them. I feel like this year it's changed to where it's Probably, yeah, when you're dating bit. or married. Anytime you're placed someone. in a situation where, you <laughs> yeah. know, you have to deal with stressful situations uh, on a daily basis with anybody, you know, you learn a lot about each other, but luckily, you know, 10 years in, we, uh, we have, we have a good, we have a good thing going. We have it figured out. So <laughs> luckily, but hey, you know, it's 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 not easy. You know, it's not it isn't. It's like especially when you both want to be out there, you want to be working and you know, there's it's it's it can be tough, but at the end of the day, you know, we, we make the best of it. Well, cheers to the two of you and thank cheers you. to everyone watching and thank goodness we have this amazing outlet of music and wine because I don't know what I would do without the two. Um, with that being said, Lee, if you want to do two songs back to back, let's do oh, it. Oh sure. Let's do it. All right. I'll, I'm gonna first one I'm gonna play for you is called "Breathing In," and then I'm gonna play another one for you. Here we go. <clears throat> You're the young, you're the young, you're the young, 
So the next one I'm going to play for you is the song we talked about earlier. Um, there you go. Yeah, why not? Um, <laughs> why not? And cheers to all of you out there that are hanging out. Really appreciate it. Love you guys. Um, and Jam, and you guys for having me, of course. But I'm going to play you. Um, I'm going to play you Blackbird song, which is a song I wrote for The Walking Dead that we were talking about. And I, and this song represents a lot for me because I think it was really the first. Uh, toe I dipped in the water of, you know, music being placed in movies or TV and things like that. And, um, yeah, this is Blackbird's song. Pairs well with wine, you know? It does. <laughs> Those vocals. Okay, I, I have to admit I have yet to watch The Walking Dead because it's, it's okay. a very lengthy show. I love Zombieland and all things Halloween-esque and zombie-related, so I've got to get to doing <laughs> that. But, I mean, man, those the vocals, they're like soul-stirring. Thank and you. I know, I, I did watch the clip. It was like... Uh, Oh gosh, the episode, it's called Alone. Is it the fourth season? That is right. Yay, okay. That uh, is absolutely right. 
It's the episode is alone, and it's Bob Stuckey, I believe is the name. I don't want to mispronounce it. Hold on. It's gonna grab something, but I can't reach it. It's connected. Well, you know that dude who played the Joker. Um, he's actually starring in a new zombie flick. It's called the uh, the Joaquin Dead. Wow. So you have to take. I a walked right into that one. Yeah. But I appreciate. <laughs> but I appreciate it. I get it. It's fine. <laughs> So for everyone watching, I told Lee if <laughs> if he would like to participate. If you ask you the people would... around me, they will happily tell you that I am like <laughs> I tell more dad stupid jokes than than anyone they know. So I have I am not someone that's going to criticize you for these jokes. So you're you're like a dog dad right now, right? For sure, yes. Cutest dog ever. Um, yeah, he's he's, the, he's amazing. So. What do DJs refer to their dogs as? <laughs> I I allow about seven seconds and then I what, just what, say what it. is it? What's the answer? Subwoofers. Ah. <laughs> ah. I know, isn't it? Ah, it's painful in the best way, it's but okay. then it's like, oh, you have to take a sip it's every okay. time I say it's it. It's okay. It's so okay. It works out because okay. then maybe you'll forget it. <laughs> it's okay. I'm trying, to look at the, I'm, I'm trying to look at the Facebook feed on here to see what people are saying and say hi to everyone, but it's it's difficult. It's difficult. But, um, I mean, it's not – I don't know. I can't get it to work, but it's fine. I, hi, everyone that's out there. I hope you're – If you've ever attended time. one of Lee's shows, go ahead and put an emoji or just like a one-worded response – of where or like just your memory of the show yes That's please do. Fun. you guys are awesome thanks for the support and thanks for hanging out good old lee currently posted up in los angeles but originally from illinois yes um maybe i would suggest possibly refilling your glass really quick i could try <laughs> it's all the way over um, here you know why you should never here. hang out with the, the dudes from Chicago. Let's see. Why is that? So, especially like that one dude from Chicago. Illinois you. Okay, I think we're done here. <laughs> I think that's I think that's the end of that. No, I'm just kidding. That's a good one. I'm I'll, 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 I'll I'm sure I've told way worse, so don't don't I'm, don't, <laughs> don't What's your me. one? You got one? No, they kind of come to me in the moment, it. and they're really stupid, so I don't... <laughs> Perfect. Um, the, one well, I, the, one I, the one I tell a lot that people do not appreciate, and it's not funny, but I will say, did you hear there was a kidnapping today? And they're like, no, where? I'm like, it's fine. He woke up. That's one. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's really bad. And I, it's, <laughs> but it, So believe me, I dive into the really stupid. I do. I do. No, that's good. I thought that was going to go real dark. So no, that's, uh, better. that's about as dark as it gets for me on the jokes. <laughs> oh, amazing. Yeah. Oh, Cheers. my gosh. Cheers. Cheers to everybody watching. It looks like your mama, um, Kathy, she's watching. Oh, what's up, mom? Shout out to Kathy. What up, moms? You did a great, great job on, on your son. Yes, mom. Thank you for having me. <laughs> All right. So, Lee. Yes. You um, basically have been putting out music to the public, I mean, almost 15 years. It's been like 13, yeah, long 14 time. years. Um, so, what do you think has changed the most for not just like, you know, the fluctuation of, um, you know, fame or not anything related to that. I'm talking like your creative process over the years, the past decade and a half, and then some, you know, before you even were putting music out to the public. Like, how have you kind of come to accept your your own unique style as an artist? Um, well, I think for me, uh, I think you, hmm, I think the idea of success or what success means is a big one. Um, I think that gradually changes and shifts over time. I think your goals change. I think um, what part of the musical process is important to you changes. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I think for me, in the beginning, you know, you want to be accepted. You know, some t- some my definition of success on a personal level, I think, is being accepted um, amongst your peers that you respect within a field. To me, that's always been my definition of success for myself. You know, the people that I look up to, the people that, I, you know. Um, but I, I think that when I started, for me, for me more specifically for myself, when I started, I think I had an idea of what, what I wanted to do and what I wanted to be. And I think as I grow older, I've just become that thing, you know, versus trying to be a thing. Um, because you have this idea of like, I need to do X, Y, and Z in order to be this kind of artist that does this kind of thing. And, uh, I think for me, it's, it's really just been a a combination of the passion I have for music and, um, you know, the poetic side of it and, you know, the introspective side of it. And then there's also the business side of it. And I think learning to balance those two has always been, um, is always a big challenge for many people. I think in any kind of creative industry, um, you know, balancing the, the, the parts of it you love with the parts of it you have to do, balancing the creative process versus the business side of it. And, um, you know, the business side exists so you can continue to do it. Uh, you know, it's not so much that I ever made mu- music because I want to make a lot of money making music. You know, I don't think that's how it starts for anyone. But once it becomes what you do for a living, there's a shift that happens. And, um, you know, you start to think of things in a, in a different way as well. And so for me, I think finding that nice balance of, you know, this is a business, this is what I do is, is my job, but also that's not going to, um, be in the captain's chair of the things I'm doing, um, you know, and, and how I want to do them. I'm not going to sacrifice per se, you know, the, I'm not going to let that, the business side of it hinder the creative process. And I think finding a balance between those two things is a challenge for a lot of people, um, especially people that are just starting out, you know, someone that wants to be creative and be themselves and do their thing. But also, is anyone going to like that? Well, I guess I should do the things that people like. And, and you know, um, I think when you're young, you make those kind of decisions. Sometimes it can be difficult to um, shift out of them. So I think for me, just as I've grown older, I've, I've learned to kind of appreciate the process more and and kind of just go with the flow, but when it comes to the the music, kind of letting the the passion and the, those things be the the driving force behind it. That was the short answer to your question. <laughs> well, no, I mean, I feel like you're you're hitting on the, the note that's absolutely just just correct, and it's like a lot of a lot of times people or situations they they drive you to think that your uniqueness or what you have in your own you know career path or life path um isn't the right thing to do because that's not the norm or like you need to adhere to this standard and in my opinion it's like we shouldn't see failure and success as like separate sides of the spectrum i think that it takes failing over and over again and finding what you want to work for your own creative process or your own career path. Um, I think the two go hand in hand and I think failing leads to success. And I think they, they often coincide with one another. Yeah, and, I, and I think failing for me, I think that's, you just kind of made me think of something. I think that things that may be viewed as failures when I was younger. Mm-hmm. And as I, I've realized that there's, the really, you know, look, I think that the, the, the industry is so broad and I think that there are so many different definitions of what success is. And, and, and I think that, um, at the end of the day, the goal is that you can do what you love to do and also, you know, do it as a, do it, do it for a living as a career. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the ultimate goal. And so, um, and to be happy while you're doing it. Um, and I think that there's these little, there's like these miniature goals that you try to achieve, but how many things that I've, I've, I've aimed at one thing and, and it's turned into something else and, and it's become a whole other thing for me. So I realized that every little opportunity, every little alleyway that you go down, every little door you open, you know, you may not realize where it ends up leading to, but you know, you should never close those doors, always leave them open and, and kind of, um, just keep going, you know, creatively. Don't let any of the, the things that kind of get in the way of you wanting to be creative uh, hinder 
you know, your drive, you know, I think if anything, try to use it as a fuel, you know, in, in almost a competitive way. Like, I'm not going to like, you know, I'm like, screw that. I'm going to, you know, do X, Y, or Z. And, 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 um, it really is a learning process and everyone's process is different. But at the end of the day, I think for me, it's find out what your, you know, your version of success looks like and try to find a way to get there, put people around you that you trust and, you know, learn to trust the people that are around you is a very important part of it as well. You know, it's not just, especially if you're trying to do this on a different, a larger scale as an artist, um, that's out there as a career, you know, you, no one does it alone. And, um, you know, it starts with me, you know, I have to write the songs and I have to get out there and do it and I have to be driven and I, you know, have to, to want it and, and in order for it to work, but putting the right pieces around you is very crucial and important to, to making it work as well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So to everyone watching, you know, just find, even if it's a hobby, do something that will provide you with that very, very crucial bit of happiness at the end of the day, because yeah. that's something that's invaluable. Just make stuff, whatever it is. Yeah, exactly. Make wine, make music, make pickles, doesn't matter if it makes you happy. <laughs> All right, pickling is really fun, by the way. Sorry, I hate a pickles, but that's, that's a different. That's a different. That's a different live stream for yeah, a different time. No, I, yeah, I could do, I could do two in... hours on why pickles are the worst, but <laughs> Lee and I will have our debate about pickles at a later time. But right now, we're gonna focus on his music. I'm gonna try to focus because I love pickles and I'm offended. But um, <laughs> anywho. So I know you have uh, your album in the works that's so going to be coming out next year, yeah. hopefully, which is very exciting. But um, if you want to kind of take it back to, you know, a few years ago, some of your past albums and maybe just do two songs back to back. Oh, my God. Or whatever you want to do. Me, I don't care. Dive in, huh? Um, boy, oh, boy. <laughs> I was going to play Victims of the Night. How do you feel about that? Yes. All right, let's do that. I'm going to play Victims of the Night. This is a more recent release, but I love playing this song. So hope you guys have a good time and enjoy it as well.
play you uh, the song Castles and the reason I'm going to play it is because the song almost kind of describes exactly the scene I'm, I'm looking at right now at my window it's like the sun is going down and it's fall and the song really um, is about kind of nostalgia and that feeling um, and yeah I love this song this is Castles Do you have 
have to go. Tell me, do ya? Woo! All right. Thank you, thank you, Lee. Thank you. Earlier we were talking about like how music can capture a moment or a memory just so vividly. Yeah. And I feel like you you really did that through castles. Um, Thank you. And yeah, it, it's it's amazing. It's um it's interesting. I wrote a line of that song. Um. Very a very long time ago, I think you know it was the. Sun is going down, bags are to the ground in November. Um, and the oh, the things we miss with grass stains on our shins. And it was a conversation with my wife about how, when you're a kid, you know, a tree house is a castle. Mm -hmm. And um, that was it, was it was kind of like that really pumped a lot of like um, inspiration into the song when we had that when we were talking about it and just that feeling of playing till the sun goes down and, you know, grass stains on your, on your shins and, and all of that. And, um, I don't know just how you can kind of, those moments are so fleeting and, and once in a while you can get like it taken back to those places. And, uh, I don't know, this is just a song about, I guess, experiencing that. Mm -hmm. if you will. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a very, um, interesting thing that music particularly can, um, it's been studied that with Alzheimer's or um, patients with dementia, that they're able to be brought back to the present or at least like reminisce on memories just by having a song from. It's amazing. Music is lifetime. an amazing, music mm -hmm. is an amazing thing um, in many really ways. So. Yeah. And with that being said, thank you so much, Lee. This has been so much fun. And um, thank you to Jam and everyone that hung out. Sam, mm -hmm. thank you for talking with me cheers to you and no cheers problem. to uh everyone did you come there. up with a joke though mm. or do you have one for me i don't okay so i know victims of the night you had the french horn and uh was it trumpet yeah introduced okay that is true so what does a trumpet have in common with king tut <sighs> what's that they um they share the fact that they both Toot in common. Okay, Sam. I think. I think we're done here. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. That's and with one. that that's being said, good, he's gonna take a one. sip. I'm gonna take a sip. We're that's gonna cheers them to You guys are awesome. And Sam, it's been a pleasure. Been a pleasure. Thank you. I hope you guys have an awesome night, and uh, hope to see you again. Hope to see everyone watching in Napa and hope to see you in Napa at some point, maybe performing here. Maybe. Absolutely. I love Napa. I'll see you guys out there for sure. Woo! Good night, everyone.